I have been very late to the party on these products, but today I want to test out some super viral makeup from a while ago. For example, I will be the last person on earth to try the Tower 28 mascara that everyone has been recommending to me forever now. The most polarizing foundation to ever exist, the What the Foundation from Jones Road. Some Fenty, some Rimmel, so let's jump in. Okay, my real inspiration for this was this foundation. This is the What The Foundation from Jones Road. And if you remember, this basically broke the internet when it initially launched forever ago because the reviews are pretty intense. And there's probably one that you specifically remember from a creator named Meredith and her foundation application technique is a little different. I don't actually don't think she has her foundation like that anymore, but she was well known for applying her foundation with her fingers, which on camera definitely would get a lot of attention. So she applied this foundation like that. And I would say that was part of the reason I feel like I was seeing so much about this foundation. It was just like all the reactions to her application, but it's kind of a unique formula. So we're going to try it today. I'm a little bit skeptical just because from the start, I didn't think it would really be for me based on my preferences. I like more of a natural matte finish for foundation. And this, I mean, you can see already, it's very, very glowy. Um, I feel like I've heard such mixed things about this foundation. People either like really love it and it is their absolute favorite or they think it's the worst foundation to ever exist. And, um, Oh, I can feel the little like beads in this and they were telling me at the store that the the little beads in here are just the oils that are kind of like hard and they need to soften up. So I was at the Jones Road store recently. They had me come in and we played around with some products and they sent me home with this and a few others. So that's why I was like, okay, let me try this one on camera. And what they told me with this particular foundation was that it applies best with your fingers or a brush. They said they don't really recommend a sponge with it. And they also said that they actually don't recommend you put moisturizer underneath. Um, I mean, depending on your skin type, but that was what I said, like, you know, I don't know. I don't like so, so glowy. And that's what they were like, just try it without moisturizer, which is what I did today. And weirdly, I will say right off the bat, this is giving me more coverage than I expected. I cannot remember the last time that I applied a foundation with my fingers. Like sometimes I will start off applying it with my fingers and then pop over to a brush or a sponge to just finish the blend. But I'm trying today to like fully do this with my fingers. And I will say like, as I'm applying it, I can see why it's been so polarizing. Cause I think a lot of people just simply wouldn't enjoy this type of product, especially if you're used to a more traditional foundation because this is very different from that. That being said though, the result looks really nice. It's very glowy. I do feel like, okay, this is why I personally prefer a more mattified finish for my foundation because I just think they look more smoothing. This looks very, 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 very natural. But when I look in the mirror, I feel like my pores are a little bit more pronounced than I like them to be. But again, that's it's not necessarily the fault of the foundation as much as it is like the finish like you almost you need a more mattifying finish to get that blurred look that I personally like have I blended this out well sometimes it's very hard to see what I'm doing when I'm looking into a small mirror to like film on camera and sometimes I will watch my videos back and I'm like girl your whole jawline like you didn't even begin to blend that out what are you doing so hopefully I've got this so I think this is a perfect time for me to have these two giant pimples on my cheek. These were not here yesterday. I woke up with them this morning and I guess good, good thing for us because now we can see the coverage level here. So I feel like throughout most of my face where I didn't really have too much to cover, it looks nice. But where I have these fresh, big breakouts, like this little patch, it, it really didn't cover them at all. So we're definitely have, gonna have to go in with concealer. Mm, I actually like this more than I was expecting, but I don't see myself reaching for it on a frequent basis. I could see it being something where I'm like, I want just a little bit of coverage or just like a little bit of evening out, you know, without really doing the whole nine yards. Um, I will say with any packaging that has a little plastic separator what's the word I'm looking for there's definitely a word I'm trying to say here but anything like this I always keep those especially when it comes to like a cream product whether it's a cream foundation or a cream eyeshadow 
I find that they really help with the shelf life of the product because especially with cream eyeshadows I've used before, sometimes if I take that out, they fully dry up. Okay, but now I feel like I need to go wash my hands. This is why I don't like applying things with my fingers. Okay, I'm back, I washed my hands. Um, we're gonna go in with a little bit of concealer. We will use my favorite, the Natasha Denona concealer. I have the shade L4, no, N4, N4. Um, and I'm gonna spot conceal a little bit right here and then do my under eyes. And I'm hoping, I'm very optimistic that this look today just turns out wonderfully and is like a beautiful look that wears well because I have somewhere to be later. And that's always the risk with like filming a video. I'm like, this is either gonna turn out great or I'm gonna have to rush to wash off my makeup and reapply it. So I'm going to blend this out with a sponge, but I actually didn't even wet my sponge. Some days, I know this seems very wrong, but sometimes I like to use a dry sponge. I don't know what it is. It just gives me um, a smoother application, I find. So I'm gonna blend out the concealer. There is a piece of, I just opened a package and I had, there was like a piece, you can hear this probably, um, tissue paper. And it's sitting right on the floor near me. And Tilly is like, oh, what's in this tissue paper? And now she's laying on it. I don't know what it is. She wants to lay on anything. Anything that I put on the floor, she wants to be on it. Whether it's a box, whether maybe you, you had your coat on, it fell on the floor, she will go lay on it. Let's do blush now. I have the Tower 28 Cream Blush in the shade Dream Hour. I... We'll see, we'll see, because I don't always love a cream blush, so we'll we'll see. But I enjoy that this is in um, a pan versus a stick. I don't like a stick cream blush. This is so bright, but we'll see how it applies on the cheeks. Okay, Tilly, I'm so sorry. I think I have to take the paper away. Don't worry, I will give it back to her when we're done filming. I promise, I promise. But let's go ahead with the blush. I'm going to use... The BK Beauty 112, I like using this for any of my cream blushes. Anytime I'm using a cream product for the first time, oh, okay, wow. I was gonna say, I like to tap it on the back of my hand just to see what I'm working with in terms of like pigment level here before I straight up apply it to my face. Okay, this is really sheer and really not what I was expecting, but I think that could be nice to not get too much product. So I'm going to just go ahead and start tapping. Oh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was like a little waxy layer on the top that I had to work through first because this is actually decently pigmented. Hmm, I, this is shocking I'm sure, but I'm starting to stray away from these bright pink tones. And I still love them, but I think I'm just less obsessed with them than I was a year ago at this time. I'm starting to appreciate other tones of blush. You know, maybe not everything needs to be hot pink. That is very bright. What I'm gonna do is take the sponge that I was using, just tap around it, kind of blend out a bit around there. Okay, it looks nice. I don't always love cream blush, like I said but this is looking pretty. I could see why people that are really into cream blush like this, it looks radiant, it looks dewy on the skin. I just am such a powder person that I'm like, hmm, this is nice, but what if it was matte? And now ironically, I'm going to go in with a cream bronzer, but this is one of my favorite cream bronzers. This is the Merit Cream Bronzer. I'm taking it on a BK 109. Now this is a small foundation brush, but surprisingly lately, I have found myself reaching for this a lot as a cream bronzer brush because I feel like I can still really get in there and target it where I want it. Okay, part of my worry with the What The Foundation was that I was going to struggle to blend other products on top of it. And so far, things are laying really well over top of it. Like I'm not having any issues with application or blending, so that's a good sign. I will say my base does look very nice right now, like really natural, glowy, healthy. So I'm going to actually powder a little bit before we go in with the next product because I wanna go in with a powder highlighter slash blush, but I don't necessarily wanna apply this right now. I wanna add a, I wanna, we'll add a little powder, okay? 
just a little. So I'm gonna take my ColourPop powder. This is the Pretty Fresh in the shade Fair 2. I'm using the same BK Beauty brush. This is a clean one, but it's the same shape, the 109. And I'm just gonna start powdering kind of um, the under eye. Okay, so see, this was my other kind of potential concern with the foundation was how is powder gonna sit over top of it? Because sometimes very, very creamy emollient products, um, powder doesn't always wanna lay well over top of them. And that was kind of my fear with this. I will say though, I think even after powdering, it doesn't look as smooth as I want it to. So this is probably a foundation you wouldn't want to pair with powder. I just don't know that I'm the right audience for it. It's something I could picture, like, I think my mom would really like it. Um, again, I think I probably will use it some days, but it's just, I can tell already it's not gonna be a tip-top favorite for me. But I'm thinking of someone like my mom. I like to, she doesn't wear a lot of makeup, like, barely wears any. Occasionally, she'll apply a little bit. So I'm always, like, really intrigued with what products she enjoys. And I like, I always bring her makeup when I go visit her. I'm like, okay, what can I bring you? And maybe a year ago or less than a year ago, I brought her a foundation stick from the Ulta Beauty collection, like their in-house brand. And I did not like the foundation stick. It was very creamy. It did not wear well on my skin. It just looked heavy and didn't look nice on my skin type. But my mom, who's in her mid sixties, loved it so, so much. She still raves about it. Like last time I was there, it's pretty much empty. Like the stick is used up. She's been like digging in there. She's like, I gotta get another one of these. I love this foundation stick because for her more mature skin, that really like creamy texture sits really, really well. So I would say that's maybe who might prefer the foundation more. But I'm very, very excited to try this. This is from Fenty. It is their highlighter in the shade What a Brat. So it is this like very, very shimmery pink color and I remember of like a year ago this was so viral I wanted this shade it was sold out and now this is in a set you can buy the mini set at Target do you remember I was talking in a recent video about how Fenty snacks the minis line from Fenty is now at Target well they have a set that has this a mini gloss bomb and the mascara so we're gonna try it out today I really don't know what type of brush I want to use with this because the thing is this is actually a highlighter it's really not a blush but i've seen people wear it as a blush so like on my skin tone this obviously won't work as a highlight it's going to be too dark so that's why i kind of want to use it as like a blush topper though i know going into this it is very shimmery so that's kind of my thought here i'm like let's apply this on my cheeks and then on my eyes because i've seen it work beautifully as an eyeshadow okay i've decided i want to use the hourglass brush this is the brush from their holiday collection because it's like big and fluffy and i think i think that's what i want here or do i want something smaller and more targeted i might regret this we'll see i'm going to oh my gosh it's so sparkly i'm gonna kind of load up the brush a little bit see my thought with this brush is that oh it's so sparkly okay um you have to like sparkles on the cheeks for this which if i'm being honest i do and i don't it kind of depends there are days when i like it because a sparkle on the cheeks can create a wet look that you really cannot get with highlights that don't have kind of glitter in them to get this like really really wet look you need glitter and it does look nice Mm, maybe I should have used a different brush. Let me let me switch brushes. Hmm, I usually use this for under eye powder, but I wanna try the 108 from BK Beauty. It's a little more rounded, but it's, it's more precise. So we'll be a little more targeted with this. Also, the mini does have a mirror in it. I love to see that. The, the thing that I'm supposed to go to tonight, I might redo my makeup, but it's a Halloween party and I'm, my plan is to be Fran Fine from The Nanny. That's my plan. If the costume can come together the way I'm envisioning it, if not, I'm gonna have to run out last minute and buy like cat ears or something. But I think I'm gonna be Fran Fine from The Nanny. This is actually really pretty. I wouldn't normally go for this on the cheeks, but it looks so beautiful. And I feel like 
These are the type of looks that translate really well on camera because the glitter just reflects in a really beautiful way. But up close, you can absolutely see that there are sparkles on my cheeks. Okay, but let's move on to the eyes. I do have to touch up the brows a little bit, but we'll get there. But for eyes, I wanna use that same product on my eyes, but I wanna prime first. So I'm going to use my eyeshadow primer from Ulta Beauty. This is their matte eye primer. It's just my favorite. I have others that I do also really like, but I always go back to this one because it has a little bit of pigment to it. So I feel like it also conceals a little bit of my like veins on my eyes. And I like that it dries down matte because I think it makes blending over top a lot easier. So this is always my go-to eyeshadow primer, but I'm thinking let's add a little bit of bronzer before we go in with the highlighter on my eyelids. I'm just gonna take my Fenty bronzer also, which look at this pan, it's getting bigger. It's actually starting to pan over here as well. I'm like happy and sad. I'm always, it's always fun and exciting to hit pan because I'm like, yeah, I, I, I hit pan on something. You know, I have a decent size makeup collection, so I'm always, pumped to make progress on products, but this is my go-to favorite number one bronzer. So I'm like, no, I can see it slowly but surely getting used up here. I will definitely repurchase it. Like the day I finish that bronzer, I will be at Ulta, Sephora, wherever I need to be picking up a new one. There are not a lot of products that I would do that for. Like for the most part, I've got others that I'd be like, oh, you know, I'll just use one of the other many ones that I have, but that bronzer, absolutely not. I will be buying another one the second it's gone. Okay, we just laid down a little bit of something. Um, Now let's go in. I think I'm just gonna apply this with my finger. That I think is probably the best way, even though I kind of have long nails right now. These are the Rudy, Rudy Berry, her collab with the Quickies, the nails. I think these are so cute. They are brown for fall, but they're a little bit long. So I'm trying to, it's hard to apply shadow with your finger when you have longer nails, but okay, this is very pretty. It's definitely pink. I, for some reason, was thinking it would be less pink and more just straight sparkles, but you can definitely see the pink color there. So that's cute, I like that. I feel like last year when cold girl makeup was so big, I was seeing this specific product a lot, which makes sense because it has that like really pretty sparkle that kind of reminds you almost of like snow or something. Okay, now I'm using the Tower 28 mascara. This has been like the most recommended mascara ever. I hear so many people raving about this. I think the packaging already is very, very cute. Okay, I think I'm gonna like this. It has a rubber wand, which is always my preference. Right off the bat, the wand actually reminds me a lot of my favorite mascara from e.l.f., the Lash and Roll. So we'll see. Okay, wait, right away. I feel like this is really good at finding all of my lashes. I feel like this just amplified. It looks like I have so many more eyelashes than I actually do. I wasn't expecting much, I'm gonna be honest, because I think first impressions on mascara are really hard because I find that a mascara is not normally at its prime on first use. It's like after a week, then you start getting really good results. But this, right away, I feel like it looks like I have way more eyelashes than I do. Like it gripped onto every single lash separately and this if you're into like a fluffy lash look that is absolutely what i'm getting with this i will say though maybe if you want like the most extreme volume of life um i don't know if this will be for you because i feel like it's defining them in a still very natural way like they look fluffy which is my preference okay wait this looks so nice Okay, I feel like sometimes really hyped up mascaras I don't always love because my preference is something still kind of on the natural side but like fluffy and lengthened and lifted. And I think a lot of like really viral mascaras can lean almost a little more clumpy than I tend to like on my own eyelashes. This looks really nice. Okay, wow, I get the hype with this one. This is the first product that we've used in this video so far where I'm like, oh yeah, I can see why that was so hyped up. A lot of the others I'm like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Like they're fun, I kind of get it, but this one, uh, again, this is my first impression. So let me keep testing this and I will come back to you. But right off the bat, I'm like, okay, wait, I, I, I think I can see why this is so hyped up. It's probably gonna be worth the hype. But for lips, 
I wanted to include this one because I've been testing these out. These are the Rimmel London lip liners. I haven't used this shade yet, and I won't say that these are actually that viral. I feel like these I don't hear a ton about on the internet, but I do from subscribers. I'm constantly getting recommended to try these. And when I mentioned in video a long time ago that Rimmel London went cruelty free and I was asking for recommendations, every comment was like the lip liners, the lip liners, the lip liners. So I tested a few shades. And so today I want to try the shade Spice because the other ones I've tried, I'm loving. I talked a little bit about that in my speed reviews that just went up because in that video I was reviewing the new Jones Road lip liner, which I do really like. And this though is like a fraction of the price, super, super affordable. And I really like them. Also, let me just say, even after powdering, continuing to sit here for another, what has it been, 20 minutes, all the glow came back from the foundation. Like I'm so glowy, I personally don't like it, but again, I can see that there's definitely an audience for it. I don't know if I love this shade as much as I thought that I was going to. It might just be with all the pink I have going on. This is too orangey red for that. So I'm thinking let's pair it with more of a pinky gloss. I'm gonna take Fussy from Fenty because I think it'll still pair well with a lip liner, but it will tie in the pink and like some of the shimmer from everywhere else. Or should I try the shadow on my lips because I've seen people do that as well. You know what? I don't like the way that this looks, so let's put the shadow on my lips. Let's try that. Let me take this off so we can try what a brat on the lips. Okay, so instead let's use the Essence 8 Hour Matte Lip Liner in the shade 3 Soft Beige. This is like almost the same color as my lips. All right, so we've got that and then we'll just take a little bit of this again. I'm gonna apply it with my finger. And then just put it, ooh, <laughs> that's cute. So this is probably not gonna like last or stay on the lips, but it looks cool. You remember when glitter lips were like such a big thing? Overall, if I'm being honest, I hate this look. I am not looking my best, but I don't know that it's necessarily the individual products as much as it is the entire look together. The biggest standout was definitely the mascara though. Have you tried any of these? Do you love them? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.